chat was popping YouTube. So, for Christmas, I was given a copy of the original V for Vendetta graphic novel. I'd always wanted to read it, and so I did. And I gotta tell you, taxation is theft. Sipping on tea, pass me a bourbon. Had to run a man down in my wellies. Now I'm on telly, Piers Morgan. So I'm be real here. There's a lot to unpack with this one. It's one of Alan Moore's books. Alan Moore is probably my favourite rabid anarchist comic book writer. And Watchmen's a banger, and The Killing Joke is probably the greatest Batman story ever written. So this story opens with Evie. She's a 16 year old slut who decides to make some cheeky cash and goes off to become a prostitute. As only fans doesn't exist in V for Vendetta, she goes out to pick up some horny men one night, but unfortunately, the first guy she tries to get frisky with is a policeman. He calls his friends over, as it's illegal to be a whore in England now, and uh, they decide they're going to, uh, you know, rape and kill her. Unfortunately for them, Evie's pimp, some edgelord Mary Sue in a Guy Fawkes costume who can do everything but survive three bullet wounds to the chest, shows up, kicks their asses, and rescues Evie from the pigs. He takes Evie off to a rooftop and introduces himself as V. He then blows up the Houses of Parliament, just straight up blows up the Houses of Parliament, and uh, takes her back to his crib, colloquially called the Shadow Gallery. In here, he has a bunch of swag, like forbidden music, movies and things, and it's basically a film borough incel's bedroom in his mum's basement, except where the incel is superpowered and the mum is the entire country of England. Anyway, we are then introduced to the fascists. Mr. Susan. Mr. Susan is supreme leader. He's an out and out fascist and runs the country. He's also in love with Fate, the supercomputer that runs the country. There's Mr. Armand, who's head of the Finger, which is the police force, and he is extremely incompetent. And there's Mr. Finch, who is the head of the Nose, which is like the detectives and investigators. He's a really good detective, but isn't really sold on the whole fascist thing. But my wife Susan keeps him around because he's the only competent fascist in history. He sets out to investigate the destruction of Parliament, and ends up calling V, codename V. The fascist spins some bullshit about the demolishment of Parliament being intentional, and then the stage is set. So V sets off on a vendetta uh, against the remaining people who ran a concentration camp he was held in once. He kidnaps a man called Louis Prothero, who is this creepy doll collecting ex Gestapo officer, who is now the propaganda voice of the fake computer. He takes him to a mock concentration camp and turns him into a vegetable. He then sends Ben back to the fascists. With the loss of the voice of fate, a huge propaganda of victory over the party is won. Evie then fills us in on her sob story, and in the process informs us that there was a nuclear war, which ended up with the British government crumbling. The country fell into chaos with gangs running everything, but then the remaining corporations unified with some right-wing gangs and took over the country and set up a theocratic fascist ethnostate. V then enlists the help of Evie, who is happy to not be living in a shitty orphanage, and uh, so he disguises her as a prostitute and sends her off to sleep with this bishop. V then breaks in before they can get frisky with Kremit and feeds the bishop a poison communion wafer, which is fucking jokes. This bishop also worked at the concentration camp. Mr. Finch is on the case, though, and he figures out that V's next target will be this woman he's banging, who was the doctor at the concentration camp. He also learned that everyone who worked at the concentration camp has been bumped off over the last five years, and also learns that V was in room five of the camp. Experiments were done on him, specifically on his brain. It made him hyper-intelligent and super charismatic, but because of this, he managed to trick the uh, guards into giving him uh, homemade explosives and got out of the camp. So Mr. Finch calls up Mr. Armand, who is very stressed out about work, and busy threatening his wife Rose with an unloaded gun. Anyway, he gets told to rush over to Dr. Lady's house, but uh, he forgets to load his gun, and V gets there first and kills her anyway. Mr. Armand gets in, but the idiot didn't load his gun, so V just kills him. <laughs> Mr. Finch shows up, and then Rose gets widowed and goes off to, uh, you know, fuck another party member. Because Mr. Armand dies, the absolute tool Mr. Creedy takes over the army, and then V sets up the next step of his dastardly plan. He goes over to the Old Bailey and spits a thesis on anarchism, then blows it up. The fascists start to get all flustered, and over the next year, V sets out his master plan to secure an anarchist utopia. He ditches Evie, who ends up banging this criminal man called Gordon. Rose becomes a dancer at the CD club, the same club that Gordon and a bunch of his criminal friends do business in. Unfortunately, Gordon gets bumped off by a bunch of the criminals, and then Evie goes to kill the guys who killed Gordon. Unfortunately, because Pig Lord Creedy frequents this nightclub, a bunch of policemen arrest her, and she gets taken to prison. In the meantime, Rose buys herself a gun from a criminal. This is very important for later. Anyway, cutting back to Evie, she gets taken to prison, and she is interrogated over working with codename V. They give her my biannual haircut and lock her up in prison. In prison, she finds a note from this lesbian actress who got concentration camped ages ago. Eventually, the fascists give her the option to sell out V in exchange for re-education, but she refuses. They tell her that she's about to die, but they leave her door open. She leaves the cell, walks through the torture chamber, and realizes that everything has been a complete prank the whole time. Uh, all the people are like effigies and mannequins and almost everything that had been said to her was recorded on a tape recorder. It's just a prank bro. 
it was V the whole time and he did it to make her stronger, which works somehow. Basically, he's grooming her to be the next V and uh, gave her the whole concentration camp treatment. Uh, and Evie from now on has a much more active part in the terrorism. V then reveals the final few steps in his master plan. He blows up all the surveillance systems in England and then starts the anarchism. However, he has a version of the fake computer, somehow, which allows him to monitor everything that he's turned off for the fascists. And this is how he's been doing all this OP shit the whole time. Anyway, so now the country's in chaos, there's riots everywhere. V starts using Fate to send weird notes to everyone, and Susan is melting down. He is actually in love with Fate, and is sure that the computer is in love with him, because he saw that appear on the message board at one point. Um, he is, you know, busy masturbating to the supercomputer instead of, you know, running the country. Yes, this is an actual scene that exists in this book. There is a scene where Supreme Leader Susan is having a wank because of the computer. It's an Alan Moore book, it's going to be whack. So anyway, Mr. Finch leaves to go on a spirit quest to find V, and so the new head of the nose figures out that V has a copy of Fate. This sends Mr. Susan over the edge, and Mr. Creedy sees a position to start up a cheeky coup. He goes and buys off a bunch of criminals in the clubs he goes to regularly, and sets out to take over. He convinces Mr. Susan to give a public speech in order to make him appear damaged and weak. However, there are a few more schemes afoot here. Part 1. Rose, who bought her gun earlier, decides that she's just going to go and kill Supreme Leader Susan for ruining her life. And Helen, the wife of the head of the Eye of Fate, the surveillance guy, wants to take over the government too. So she, who is having an affair with head haunter criminal man that Creedy hired, buys them off to actually double-cross Creedy when the time comes. Hope you all followed that. Anyway, at Susan's meet and greet, Rose goes to shake his hand and just kills him. She gets taken away to fester in prison for a bit, and Creedy takes over the country. Mr. Finch goes to Auschwitz and takes some LSD and goes on a mad spirit trip and figures out everything, because that's how LSD works, according to Alan Moore. V then spits another thesis on anarchism to Evie and gives her a tour of the Shadow Gallery. V shows her a train filled with explosives that will be travelling under 10 Downing Street at some point, but Mr. Finch finds V's base in Victoria Station because of the power of drugs. He goes down and finds V. He shoots V three times in the chest, but gets shanked, but he does survive. He then tells Creedy and Co. that codename V is dead. Riots erupt all over the country, but before Mr. Creedy can fully take control, Helen's goons kill him. However, because she thought the surveillance was all turned off, she's been having a blatant affair with the criminal man. However, V has recorded the whole thing and sent a copy to her husband. Because of this, her husband kills criminal man and himself, and there's no government anymore. V goes back to Evie and dies, but she put his costume on and goes to the riot. Because the fascists had told everyone V was dead, when they see V at the riot, it's a huge deal. Evie then spits a thesis on anarchism and says she'll be off. She then goes and blows up Downing Street. The story ends with her finding a young man and taking him under her wing, still in the Guy Fawkes costume, and continuing the whole V legacy. And it also ends with Helen finding Mr. Finch in a park and trying to convince him to help her take over the government. He refuses. The end. I'm like Piers, because I got more dough than female peers. So the thematic content of this book is extremely heavy-handed. Uh, this is a completely pro-anarchist thesis piece. The book is basically trying to sell the reader on anarchism as a concept, and has a surprisingly nuanced take on it. It's mature, but it does manage to still tell a really engaging political satire story without letting its own political thesis detract from the, you know, the entertainment factor, which is a skill. There was a great scene, really great scene, where V explains the difference between anarchism and chaos, which are often conflated. He says that anarchism is an absence of leaders, not of laws, and it is really probably the best bit of anarchist fiction I've ever read. The entire argument is really well articulated, and it's one that a lot of people really don't get in real life. Um... The characters that are meant to be fleshed out, such as V, Finch, and Evie, are really well written. It's an Alan Moore book, though, you kind of expect it. And the butts of the satire, like Susan, Creedy, and Almond, are also really funny, um, in a very different way. Overall, it deals with historical injustices such as the Holocaust, homophobia, and religious totalitarianism, and it does its best to put forward an alternative, even if that alternative is a 14-year-old edgelord's pipe dream of an alternative. There are a few issues with it, though. Uh, Visa Mary Sue, there's no other way to say it. While a lot of the random bullshit he gets away with makes sense when he learned that he can access the Fate computer, the book never actually explains how he gets a copy of Fate, and so he's still a Mary Sue right up until time of death. He never fails. At least in the film, Evie has the realistic reaction of ditching V after he tortured her, but here she's even more invested in the cause afterwards. She has straight up Stockholm Syndrome. V is Mary Sue, a textbook wish fulfillment character. He is smart, a great fighter, unrealistically successful, and everyone either loves him, fears him, or respects him, or all three at once. Overall, pretty good. I'll give it four out of five. See you, chumps. Also, if you want to support me, you can check out my novels. 
All Hail the Carrion King and Deadskin Mask. They're in the description. Um, they're dark fantasy and horror, respectively. So if those up your alley, um, if you go and buy one, it really helped me out. And yeah, thanks. I send shots via Royal Mail and I never pay for the tracking. I bleed blue, so it's the Tory party I'm backing. And the first name ain't Eden, but I'm still a hazard when attacking. Gold, gold.